Hi everyone, I am Dr. Babita and in this video, we will talk about the blood retinal barrier. As always, before starting this video, I would like to remind you that in case you wish to see my videos in Hindi, then the link to my Hindi channel can be found in the description box below. So let's begin. To understand the concept of blood retinal barrier better, I would like you to imagine a gated community. A gated community has houses on the inside and it is bordered by a wall on all four sides. If an outsider wants to enter this community, then he can only enter through a gate. And this gate is manned by a security guard who only lets certain verified individuals to enter that community. But in case there is a breach in the walls, then stray animals or even thieves can enter without any restriction, disturbing the peace and quiet of this community. Now I would like you to imagine this gated community as the retina and the area surrounding it as blood that is present in the systemic circulation. Our retina is closed off from the systemic circulation and only certain selective substances are allowed to enter and leave the retina. This barrier that separates the retina from the systemic circulation is known as the blood retinal barrier. There are two types of blood retinal barriers the inner blood retinal barrier and the outer blood retinal barrier. Retina can be divided into two parts, inner retina and outer retina. Inner retina gets its blood supply from the central retinal artery, while the outer retina gets its blood supply from the choroidal circulation, which means that retina has dual circulation. Blood reaches the retina through two separate routes Thus, two different barriers are needed to prevent the influx of toxins and other substances, ions, antigens from the blood to retina at the inner retinal level as well as at the outer retinal level. Talking about the inner retina first, central retinal artery enters the eye through the optic nerve and then it divides into various branches to reach within the retinal layers. These branches form three plexuses that lie at three different levels in the retina. There is a deep plexus, an intermediate plexus and a superficial plexus of vessels. The deep plexus lies at the level of the outer plexiform layer. The intermediate plexus corresponds to the inner plexiform layer and lastly the superficial plexus corresponds to the nerve fiber layer of retina. The inner BRB or the blood retinal barrier is formed by the endothelial cells that line these blood vessels. So these are the endothelial cells that line these blood vessels. These endothelial cells are joined by tight junctions. These tight junctions are known as zonulae occludens. These endothelial cells also have a thick basement membrane surrounding them. Therefore the spaces between the endothelial cells are sealed. These together form a barrier between the blood and the retina or what is known as the inner blood retinal barrier. Also, these endothelial cells are covered by other cells like pericytes, astrocytes, microglia and Muller cells which also contribute to the function and integrity of the inner blood retinal barrier. All these cells together form what is known as a neurovascular unit or NVU. The inner blood retinal barrier controls the transport of molecules, ions, water and cells to and from the retina, from the systemic circulation, through transcellular and paracellular pathways. Transcellular means that the transport of substances occurs by passing through these cells. Paracellular means that the transport takes place by passing through the space between two cells. Transport across the inner blood retinal barrier occurs mainly through a transcellular mechanism. Small lipophilic molecules can freely diffuse through the endothelial cells while larger lipophilic molecules along with hydrophilic molecules and ions cross the blood retinal barrier using ATP dependent transport. Damage to endothelial cells and to the inner blood retinal barrier is a key event in several eye diseases such as diabetic retinopathy, retinopathy of prematurity, retinal vein occlusion and uveitis. The breakdown of the inner blood retinal barrier can lead to vascular leakage and macular edema, thus affecting vision. Let's talk about the outer blood retinal barrier now. Outer blood retinal barrier is mainly formed by the retinal pigment epithelium, 
the other component of the outer blood retinal barrier is the brux membrane to understand this concept better let's see this diagram this structure here represents the choroid choroid is located between the sclera and the retina and it contains the choriocapillaris which is a highly dense vascular network with multiple fenestrations this choriocapillaris contains the nutrients that provide nourishment to the outer retina it is also the route via which waste materials are removed from the outer retina the innermost layer of choroid is the brux membrane which is a fibrous membrane mainly composed of collagen an internal to it is the rpe or the retinal pigment epithelium which is the outermost layer of retina these rpe cells are joined together by tight junctions which are known as zonulae occludens thus these rpe cells and brux membrane together form the outer blood retinal barrier which separates the choriocapillaris from the retina as part of the outer blood retinal barrier the brux membrane acts as a size selective barrier it blocks the diffusion of molecules of high molecular size but allows small molecules to pass through transport across the retinal pigment epithelium can occur through both paracellular as well as the transcellular routes although most transport occurs transcellularly this transport can occur via diffusion or through an electrochemical gradient or via atps pumps tight junctions are not a complete barrier They selectively block and allow the passage of different ions thereby creating a concentration gradient helping to facilitate the transcellular processes So the question that arises is why is this blood retinal barrier needed at all Now retina is a highly metabolically active structure its oxygen consumption is very high and thus any imbalance in this strict microenvironment can lead to increased oxidative stress and oxidative damage to the retinal neurons that is why it needs to be insulated from the blood stream and that work is done by the blood retinal barrier blood retinal barrier keeps the eye as a privileged site in the body by regulating the contents of its inner fluids and preserving the internal ocular tissues from the variations that occur constantly in the systemic circulation it also serves as a drainage route for the waste products generated in the retinal tissue Like we learned earlier, BRB impairment is a hallmark of retinal dysfunction and retinal diseases like diabetic retinopathy, ROP, vasculitis, also ARMD. So that is all for this video. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful and do subscribe to my channel to support free education. Thank you very much.